Hello and welcome to The Main Cave. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you all about the Logitech MX Mechanical Keys and see if I think it's worth its £170 price tag. Or is it even as good as my original MX Keys that keyboard that I've been using for the past few years? But first of all, possibly to save your time, I know what you want. We're straight off the bat here with a sound test. Please do stick around after for a bunch of information and opinions, but if it's the sound test that you want, here it is with the brand linear switches, and maybe I'll see you after. There we go then, and for those that are still here, thank you, because in this video, I'm going to be going through the unboxing, price, build quality, layout, how does it feel, features, keys, and finally, if I think it's worth the price tag. Along the way, I'll also be comparing it to my older MX Keys keyboard to highlight where the mechanical differs. You can get this particular keyboard in a mini version if you don't want the extra keys on the side, but when being productive, I've always preferred the extra numpad on the side. The MX Mechanical combines Mac and Windows, whereas my old MX is a Mac specific keyboard, but I'll talk about that more in a bit. Being a Logitech device, I'd expect it to be a decent unboxing with everything you need. So inside you get a keyboard wrapped up in tissue paper, a USB-C cable, paperwork, and a connection dongle, and that's your lot. As I said at the beginning, I paid an eye-watering £170 for this keyboard. That's quite a bit more to say something comparable such as a Keychron or maybe a new fee. So I need this to be a decent keyboard to justify the price. I did a search on Camel Camel and the keyboard hasn't dropped in price recently. So if you are looking to get this cheaper, maybe keep it on your Amazon wish list till that time or shop around to see if anywhere near you sells it cheaper. You can also check the links in the description below for the latest price. So putting it out of the box, it's clear that it's a premium device. It feels sturdy and it's very good quality. It's mainly plastic, but there's no flex in the body at all. And weighing in at 828 grams, it's a hefty piece sat on the desk. On the underneath, there is one large rubber foot across the front with two rubber feet at the back if you use the flip out feet or not. On the back is a USB-C power port and an on off switch. This larger version is 43.5 centimeters wide by 35 centimeters deep. And the most noticeable dimension is the 2.7 centimeters high without the feet, 3.5 centimeters with them extended, which makes it a very slim mechanical productive keyboard. The MX Mechanical isn't the boldest of looking keyboards. It's a two-tone gray, gives it a very business-like appearance with the backlight only in white. This isn't a gaming keyboard and nor is it styled as one. So this is the UK layout, so it might be slightly different to what you've seen, but the main points are here. Along the top is a row of F keys one through 12, which also doubles up as media control functions with all the usual, such as brightness, volume, play and pause, etc. Also, there's a couple of newer features than the older MX, and that's the inclusion of a screenshot button, mute mic, and an emoji key. The F keys are fully customizable in the software, which I'll also talk about later. You can set what this row defaults to by pressing FN and escape, either the FN keys or the media keys. It would be nice if the backlighting highlighted the row that was active, but it appears that only the media keys are the ones that light up. So this larger version has the usual layout and on the right, the number pad, as I mentioned before, has various other buttons that I've really come to rely on, such as show desktop, spotlight search and lock. With this keyboard being Windows and Mac compatible, if like me, you've been used to the Mac layout on past Logitech keyboards, the layout is slightly different. This keyboard covers all of the bases with an extra key on the right side of the spacebar, making the spacebar slightly smaller than, but that's really the only difference. And if like me from coming from a Mac specific keyboard, maybe in the future they'll add a Mac only version, but for now it caters for everyone and it does it really well. Now onto the features now, and the most obvious feature is the mechanical keys. So these are the brown quiet keys. On the Logitech website, you can either go for two types of keys, linear and clicky, but on Amazon, I wasn't given the choice. But had I, I'd probably have gone for these anyway. Logitech has stuck to the positives of past iterations of their keyboards by allowing you to connect up to three devices using a combination of Bluetooth or using the connection dongle. I have it connected to my Mac mini, my iPad and my Windows PC, all via Bluetooth. Switching is seamless and fast. Simply press the appropriate button and you're done. 
I found no lag when using Bluetooth. With Backlight On, you get 15 days of usage or 10 months without. So if you're after a keyboard that you don't need to worry about charging, then this is a fantastic choice. I use Backlight all the time and I can't remember the last time I charged it. The keyboard tries to save power by using the finger sensing technology, which works by moving your hands near the keyboard and it lights up. Move them away and it dims. It's a nice feature, however, with this and the same as my old MX, it takes half a second to light up, so you need to pause before you start typing. And wow, does it go out quick. There's no way of changing this delay as yet, but I'd like to think they'll be adding it to the software in the future. And I'll be talking about the software in a bit. The backlight has a few different modes, such as static, breathing, random, etc. And this could all be changed on the fly using the function keys all within the software. So how does this feel to type on? In a nutshell, it feels very good. For seasoned mechanical keyboard users, you may need to get used to the slim nature of this design. And coming from the old MX, you'll be pleased to hear I'm finding I'm missing far less keys than I was. I think this is due to the older MX being much flatter and, and so learning where the keys were always felt like I was slapping the keyboard. Here's the mechanical one, you get a fraction of a second to get the right key before pressing and the travel is enough for a satisfactory acknowledgement of a press. The keyboard is low enough not to need a wrist rest, but it all comes down to personal preference. You can always extend the feet at the back to raise it up a touch if you need to. I've used the keyboard for a long time and I've never had fatigue using it. All in all, it's a decent experience and if comfort is a worry for you, no need to be concerned, it's all good here. There's a lot to like about the keys, but if I have one real negative out of the way first and that are the keycaps. They are ABS and I know in time they will become shiny. I'm already at the stage where I need to clean the keys almost daily and I know in a month or two the shine will be permanent and I'll need to replace them. If I'm being honest and slightly cynical, I'm surprised Logitech hasn't already come out and tried to sell me replacement keycaps. Nevertheless, you can replace them yourselves. They have a very similar fitting to the Cherry keys, so you can change them if you have any spare keycaps at home. But the space bar though, it has an almost bespoke distance between the pins, meaning out of all of my spare keycaps, none fitted the space bar. Every other key was fine though. The switches aren't removable, but they're linear, quiet and feel fantastic to use. They're the brown versions. I can't speak for other types, but these are fast, responsive typing. And as I mentioned before, I didn't notice any lag or delay when typing. Now quickly into the software. In the software, it's just a case of downloading the Logitech Plus software from the website. Here you can add a keyboard and can change the F function keys, turn it on and off backlight and update the firmware needed amongst other things. It's a basic software that does a job. And if you have more Logitech devices, you can also control them from here. So 170 pounds is a lot to ask for a keyboard. But if you want one that will stay charged for a long time, can simply connect to multiple devices easily and quickly, or simply just want a well-built productive keyboard, then this may be for you. If like me already having the MX keys version of this keyboard, then £170 is a hard sell just to upgrade for the keys. So I'm not really sure it's worth it as an upgrade. So do let me know your thoughts on this. Have you got the MX Mechanical or have you got the old MX keyboard that I have? Let me know down in the comments below. Please do like, please do subscribe. And until the next video, bye bye.